So as usual, first priority arriving in port after a, after a passage is to find the nearest supermarket and water tap. So my instincts took me to Marina Rubicon, which is about a mile from the anchorage. Still doable by dinghy, but I had to put the outboard on. And indeed, on the way in, I see a sign for a dinghy dock, so looks promising. So it's required to wear a mask when you're on the Marina, Marina Rubicon premises. But uh, as soon as I got off of it, I took that mask off because it's kind of hot. This is a fairly long walk. And I'm not walking out in this heat with a mask on. Obviously, this is pretty much a desert island. It doesn't get much rain and a lot of sun. Buildings are all white. Save on air conditioning, I assume. They also have flat roofs. Almost any place where you get a significant amount of rain, you'll never have flat roofs because they're going to leak at some point. And in New England or up north where you get snow, you never want to do that because snow and ice can pile up and collapse it. But this is a different climate here. So, and lo and behold, I find the Super Dino. It's a small supermarket, but enough to top up. That's quite the view, isn't it? So glad wheels were invented. Well, the utter simplicity of it was deceptive. Back at the marina, I got flagged down by one of the staff, and it turned out that I could land my dinghy there, but I'd have to check in each time. And if I wanted to fill my water jug, it would cost 15 euros. And if I wanted to dump my trash, it would cost 5 euros a bag. So I decided I think I'll try my luck at Las Palmas. So it's Tuesday, the 13th of October. We're about to take off for Gran Canary, Las Palmas. And uh, actually these winds have eased up a bit, but... Uh, one thing I'm learning fast is you get some really crazy circulation patterns around these islands. Uh, right now the gradient wind is only about 7 knots. It's fairly light. And, uh, and this morning it was flat calm and then these winds came in very strong. As I say, it's down now to about 15 to 20. It was up 25 or so earlier. And, uh, and you also often get sea breezes too in the afternoon. The wind will completely reverse direction and start coming on shore. Um, so, these islands have, uh, these islands have a significant effect on, uh, on the wind patterns, so you got you definitely got to keep that in mind. Well, never a dull moment. So we just picked up from Papagayo, Lanzarote, and we're on our way here. Uh, my anchor chain got hooked on a coral head. So I'm cranking and cranking on the windlass. Then I look back <laughs> and I see the stern going up in the air. I thought I was getting a little closer to the water up forward and I was just cranking the bow down. Um, so, so that was kind of funny, except I couldn't figure out how in the world it was gonna get loose because the water is a little deep for me to free dive. So I slacked off the chain and just sailed around it a bit and uh, and that, that got it that got it loose. And that often works if you get uh, an obstruction as to sail or if you have an engine, just l let off some slack and uh, gently motor around it. And a lot of times if it's hooked on something, if you uh, move the boat in the right direction, it'll unhook it. So, so now I'm betting, according to the forecast, these winds are going to get lighter as we get toward uh, was it uh, Bene Fuerte Bene, which I think means strong wind, so that's not what the name would suggest, but that's what the weather models are saying, so we'll see. Hey, good morning. 
It is Wednesday, October 14th, 2020, and we got about 18 miles to go to Las Palmas. And uh, you can just, when she rolls there, you can just make out the outline of the island of Grand Canary. Um, oh, we had a fun light, night last night. Um, it was okay until we got into the acceleration zone by uh, Fuerte Ventura, which I'm pretty, pretty sure that does mean strong wind, so at least the island was aptly named. And uh, had to reef all the way down, triple reef main, heavy weather jib, winds over 30 at times. And, uh, and then they rapidly dropped down, but we had this horrible leftover swell that was really knocking us all over the place. And uh, so that was, you know, it's hard on the rig and hard on my nerves. And uh, so now you can see we're still we're still getting knocked around, but it's it's not so bad now. And the good news is, uh, so far the wind is holding. As the wind is forecast to go light, uh, especially as we approach Grand Canary, it looks like what happens is the wind tends to lift as we approach the island. And uh, that's a danger for us engineless folks because it's uh, we're coming in on a lee shore here, so we got to just play that. And uh, it'll be nice to get behind that big break wall there and uh, get into flat water. Um, I also notice right off the starboard bow there's an oil platform. I had to look through the binoculars, couldn't figure out what that was, and uh, haven't seen haven't seen an oil platform in a while. So, that's where we're at, and uh, we'll see what this wind does. Hopefully we'll be sailing into uh, Las Palmas around noon or so, uh, early afternoon. So, we'll see. There's no question this is a bit of a dangerous approach, because we have big swells, and the swells are pushing us up on a lee shore. Um, so, we gotta, uh, we gotta hope we don't run out of wind here. Now there is a boat up ahead of me. Looks like a performance catamaran. And so far he's holding on to his wind, so that's a good sign. Now well, the wind is getting lighter, but we still got wind. And we still got plenty of swell. And it's, so it's just it's just excruciating. Plus we got these big freighters milling around waiting to go into their berths. I hope this guy doesn't decide to step on the gas. off to the port hand side of the channel because of this freighter. Unfortunately, I don't see a line running from what looks like a dredging vessel off to my starboard and buoy there to my port. And he's hawking at me right now to try to warn me, but it's too late. I was lucky. Just went right over this guy's line here. The advantage of a long keel boat. Well, that certainly could have been interesting if, if I'd snagged that line uh, around my rudder or something, trying to free that in a rolly harbor entrance there with lots of commercial traffic. Um, could have been interesting. So we're in much flatter water now. We're gradually working our way toward the anchorage of Alcanaveras. downwind approach. It looks like there's there's spaces to anchor there so it can often be deceptive 
uh, when you're approaching, especially looking at it through the binoculars, then when you actually get there, the actual arrangement and the amount of space uh, can be different from what you thought. But it looks like I've found a decent spot, so I'm going to put her up into the wind and drop anchor. Now the challenge is moved from the high seas onto terra firma, which can be at least as challenging. I do not choose to carry boat insurance, uh, just because all the plans I've looked at seem like a lot of premium for a meager amount of coverage, so I, I choose to just self-insure. Uh, unfortunately, Spanish bureaucracy needs official documents which I don't have. So... No soup for you! <laughs> but it is too early in the season to cross the Atlantic. There are still cyclones in the Atlantic at present. And plus I need to top up on provisions and water. So I need to stay in Los Palmas for at least a week or two. But this is a human problem, and all human problems can be solved with a major credit card. So I found my way to the local insurance office, and luckily the man there spoke English, and he also understood my problem right away. So I take it I'm not the first one. And uh, for about $75 US, I got a policy. I have no idea what's in it, but it was sufficient to get me past the Port Authority, so good enough. We are back in the big city now. <laughs> 